It may not look all that different, but this new or facelifted version of the Renault Traffic Van has seen some pretty significant changes, including new safety technology, new interior tech, and a new interior look. Plus, there's also a bigger engine available across the entire range. But is that worth a big price jump? Well, you'll have to keep watching to find out. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a full detailed run through of pretty much everything you're gonna to wanna to know about the new generation Renault Traffic and whether you should be considering it if you're looking at, say, a Toyota Hiace or Hyundai Staria Load. So stay with me. I don't know about you, but I don't have nine grand lying around waiting for me to spend it. But if you are looking at a Renault Traffic, this new version is gonna cost you up to $9,000 more. I mean, you do get a few extra items and some safety equipment that you didn't get before, but is that too much? And is it competitive with those other vehicles which might cost just as much as it? Prices are up between $4,610 and $8,610, depending on the grade, and you can still get the traffic in short wheelbase and long wheelbase versions. Opening the lineup is the more basic Pro model, which is priced from $48,200 at the time we're publishing this. That's for the base model manual, and if that seems expensive, it is. Add two grand if you want the auto, and another two if you want the long wheelbase. A more feature-rich version, called Premium, starts at $55,200 for the short wheelbase auto. Add two more for the long wheelbase. My written pricing and spec story can be found in the links below, and it details the differences between the two grades. But justifying the price hikes are across the board items like auto emergency braking, lane departure warning, a new multimedia screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and all models now come with the punchier diesel engine too. No need to worry about anything back here or along here because nothing's changed in terms of that part of the design of this van. It's all about the front end. And as you can see, it does look a little bit different at a glance. There's a new bonnet, there's a new grille with quite a bit of chrome on this spec. This is the premium version. And you get new headlights on all grades as well. They are full LED lights with these nice LED daytime running lights as well. And a new front bumper lower section too. So you will be able to pick it in traffic, if you get my pun there. But I think the actual bigger changes are on the inside when it comes to the design. So let's have a look. So, in terms of the interior design, it looks pretty different uh, compared to the last version of the Renault Traffic, and a lot of that comes down to some of the parts that seem to have been borrowed from the Renault passenger car range, including these switches. I love these little piano key switches, they call them, underneath this new 8-inch touchscreen media system, which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, digital radio as well, and sat-nav on the higher specs if you want it. And there's lots of practical things as well, and I'll get to them in just a sec. As a driver of a van, you need to be comfortable. That's a big focus for Renault, and it's pretty evident in this new version of the Renault Traffic. It is comfortable. Uh, the driver's seat has good adjustability. You've got rake and reach adjustment for the steering, which is nice. And you've also got an armrest here. Now, if you don't need to use all three seats, uh, which you might not, you've got this. That's pretty cool. It's a fold down, I guess, workplace. You could put a laptop there and work there. And this actually comes out and can hold a clipboard, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I think that it's a pretty neat little piece of interior thoughtfulness, I guess you could say. There's a cup holder here. There are cup holders here on the edges of the dashboard as well. A nice open cubby behind the screen with a couple of USB ports to keep things charged up. You've got a wireless charger down here as well on the higher grade models. And generally it's a pretty thoughtful place in terms of practicality elements. You've got big bottle holders in the doors, lots of storage throughout the cabin. Oh, and also I wanna show you this other little neat trick. You can pull up the seat bases and you actually get extra storage under the seat which just means you can keep things secure if you need to. That's pretty cool. Now let's check out the business zone. If you buy a Renault Traffic base model van, you won't get a driver's side sliding door as standard. Now, if you wanna know what you have to pay for to get 
in your Renault traffic van. You can read my full detailed review and my pricing and specs story as well at the Cars Guide website. There'll be links in the description below. But what I can say about this van in particular, this is the short wheelbase version, is that it has plenty of space in the back. If you need more, you'll get up to 6.7 cubic meters in the long wheelbase version of this van. There's lots of tie down points. I think you get 10 on this short wheelbase and 12 on the high spec version. And it also means that if you had an existing Renault traffic with a fit out already in the back, then you can simply swap it over to the new model and you won't have to change anything which means less money spent which is good for consumers and good for businesses as well I like the fact that you can get barn doors or a tailgate depending on what your needs are I would say though that if you do buy a traffic or any van with a tailgate on the back you're gonna need to park about two or two and a half meters away from where you need to be because well they fold out a long way. And also it does limit what you can do with it in terms of forklifting a load into the back. But I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know if you already own a van like this. In here is a two liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine. It's the only engine available across the entire Renault traffic range. But it's the big boy. It's got 125 kilowatts and 380 newton meters, which is more than all the other ones that have come before it, pretty much. If you've followed the Renault traffic trajectory, you'll know that there was a 66 kilowatt one, and then an 85 kilowatt one, and a 103 kilowatt one. Now there's 125 kilowatts. Apparently that's what people wanted, more power, more torque, and they've got it. And there's a choice of a six-speed manual or a six-speed electronic dual clutch transmission, EDC, as Renault calls it, and it's front wheel drive only. Does that matter to you? Let us know in the comments section. So with a two litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine across the board and the choice of a six speed manual or six speed dual clutch automatic transmission, this is a pretty compelling powertrain option. It does feel punchy enough and far more punchy than the old 1.6 litre in the existing versions of the traffic. And that is a good thing because competitors out there do have pretty punchy diesel engines as well. Now I've spent all my time today in the dual clutch automatic version and I've had no real issues with it at all. The transmission seems to be pretty smooth and pretty smart. My biggest issue though was turbo lag, especially when taking off from a standing start. You do notice at times that it, there is a bit of a moment before you actually progress. It's not a big deal, but it's something you might want to be mindful of. And when it comes to the other parts of the drive experience, well, the steering is really good. It's nice and accurate with nice weight to the steering as well. It doesn't feel like you have to turn the wheel too much to go around corners, which is great. And there's not too much body roll either. And when it comes to the suspension and ride comfort, well, it's very good. This van doesn't have any weight in the back and it's still very impressive. Sure, you might notice a bit of a lumpy, bumpy section every now and then, but it's never to the point where it's uncomfortable which is important for van drivers. Another finding that sort of surprised me in this van today was just how quiet it is. There is a bit of diesel rumble here and there, but there's not too much wind noise or road noise to contend with. Obviously, a lot of that has to do with this steel bulkhead and that just sort of dampens things a little bit in terms of noise coming through from the back. But otherwise, it's pretty livable. On your screen now, you'll see the official combined cycle fuel consumption figures for both the manual version and the dual clutch automatic version of this van. And on your screen now, you'll see what I saw during my launch drive of this new model. And that included urban driving, suburban, and also a bit of highway thrown in as well. Now, the thing I want to call out is that it has an 80 litre fuel tank and that means that even based on my higher than claimed fuel consumption figures that I've seen, you're going to get more than a thousand k's of driving range, which could be really good for your business. The safety equipment fitted to this facelifted version of the traffic van is an improvement on the last one, but the last one had no safety equipment in terms of active safety technology at all. So. What you get is car-to-car -car AEB, so no junction detection, no pedestrian detection, and no cyclist detection, and they are pretty important things if you ask me. And you also get 
lane departure warning, but not lane keeping assist like some of the other vans out there. And you also have to spend extra if you want blind spot monitoring and there's no rear cross traffic alert, but at least you're getting a reversing camera and rear parking sensors as standard. And on the premium models like this one, you also get adaptive cruise control and front and side parking sensors too. All said, it isn't the safety benchmark. There's no doubt about that. If you are looking for the safety benchmark, you should be looking at the Staria Load or the High Ace. If you do a lot of Ks, the traffic could appeal to you. It has a five year, 200,000 kilometer warranty plan and maintenance intervals for servicing are set every 12 months or 30,000 kilometers, meaning you mightn't suffer as much downtime if this is your sole work vehicle. There's a five year cap price servicing plan with an average annual service fee of about $711, which isn't cheap at a glance, but will be if you regularly do high mileage. If you abide by the service plan, you also score five years of roadside assist. So there you have it, a rundown on this new Renault Traffic or facelifted Renault Traffic. It's certainly an improvement in a lot of ways over the existing version, but you're gonna have to weigh up whether it's worth the extra money for you. And also you might wanna weigh up whether those other vans in this segment, which have better safety technology as standard across the range, might actually be a better fit for you. But ultimately, it's your call. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Here's my score.